Friends, this morning, um, we're going to be looking at the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, starting in verse 39. We've been talking about hark. Can you all say hark? Hark. We're talking about hark. Hark means to behold, pay attention, look out. Something important is being told to you, being announced to you. Listen. Listen, the angels are saying. Hark. No one says this word anymore. We should bring it back in the fashion, right? (laughs) Hark. Now, now here's the deal, is that the past two weeks, we've been hearing about how angels have been bringing these wonderful announcements. The angel Gabriel came to Zechariah in the temple and said, you and Elizabeth are going to have a baby. And Zechariah said, what? And then angel Gabriel came to Mary and said, you are going to have a baby. And Mary said, what? That's the Greek. But in this passage, we get something different. In this passage, there are no angels. In this passage, we hear about how human beings now begin to make the announcement that something is coming. And this is important for you and for me, because it's one thing to hear the angels. It's one thing to hear the word. It's one thing to hear the announcement from him. But what will we do with the announcement once it's been given to us? How will you and I announce what God has done, is doing, and will do? Because he is the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. Amen? He didn't just come once. He's coming again. And frankly, he's arriving right now into our lives. How do we announce it? So there there are um, three Ways There are more than three ways, but three ways I feel like the scripture speaks to us about announcing the good news, the coming of Christ into the world. And and they are the announcement from presence, the announcement from blessing, and the announcement from what I want to call praise and sacrifice. The announcement from presence, the announcement from blessing, and the announcement from praise and sacrifice. So let's turn to the word this morning, the gospel of Luke Chapter 1, verse 39, and Luke writes, Now at this time, Mary arose and went in a hurry to the hill country, to a city of Judah, and entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Can you all say filled? And she cried out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how has it happened to me that the mother of my Lord would come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby leapt in my womb for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what had been spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul exalts the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has had regard for the humble state of his bond slave. For behold, from this time on, all generations will count me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is upon generation after generation toward those who fear him. He has done mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who were proud in the thoughts of their heart. He has brought down rulers from their thrones and has exalted those who were humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent away the rich empty-handed. He has given help to Israel, his servant, in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and his descendants forever. And Mary stayed with her about three months and then returned to her home. And all God's children say, amen. This is a wonderful, wonderful story. It's kind of in between some of the main action that's going on, where we get these announcements of these angels to to Zechariah and Mary, and then pretty soon we're going to hear about the birth of John and the birth of Jesus. But in between, there's this little moment, this moment of connection, Notice in in the very beginning, Mary, we told, arises and rushes, hurries to see Elizabeth. Now, why does she do this? Because she had just heard from the angel as a testimony that Elizabeth, who has not been able to have a baby, is going to have a baby. So she's going to do what you and I would do. I want to see that thing. Right? She's going to run and say, I got to see if this is true. I mean, I believe it's true, but I want to see it. Because that's what we do. 
We hear God moving or something, we should want to be like, yeah, let me arise and hurry and go see it. Let me see the good news that I'm hearing about. But not only that, she's probably going because who else is going to understand what's going on with her? Look, here's the thing. As fellow believers, we need other believers to get how weird we are. (laughs) To get how strange we are. Why are you giving up that six-figure job to go serve over there? Jesus, you're weird. <laughs> Why are you going to sing carols in that nursing home tonight? Don't you, aren't you busy? Jesus, oh, that's weird. Why are you taking time out of your weekend to serve in that soup kitchen or to write all those cards? Jesus, that's weird. It's weird to the world, but we get it. Because Jesus has come to you and to me. And we need to come together and say, it's not weird. You have met the living God. So Mary, she needs encouragement. She needs to go to Elizabeth and say, did an angel come talk to you? Because the one came talk to me. So here's the thing. We, we need to be ones who are announcing this good news, not only to each other, but out into the world. And so I want to start with one way that we announce is we announce from the presence of God. And here's what I mean by that. When we, when we look in this scripture, Elizabeth shows up. Notice that it says that she comes to the house and she just greets Elizabeth. Now, the greeting was probably a traditional Jewish greeting. It was probably, shalom, peace be with you. Right? That's all she said when she came to the door. Elizabeth probably didn't know she was coming. She comes to the door. She's family. Right? Family can do that. Just knock on the door. Come on in. Peace be with you. Shalom. That's all she has to say. And what happens? When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby left in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. All it took was for Mary to show up holding the presence of God within her. That's all it took. And you and I, we hold that same presence within us. Look, I don't have time to go through this, but if we had time, I would point out to you that this scene echoes another scene from the Old Testament in 2 Samuel 6. And I would also point out to you that in that scene, David says, how is it that the ark of the Lord would come to me? Now wait, Elizabeth just said that. You know what else happens there? In that same scene, David, he takes the ark and he takes it to Obed-Edom. This man, he, she, they take the ark and they put it in the back corner of his garage. Because <laughs> he lives out in the hill country of Judea, the same place where Zechariah lives. And then the ark stays and blesses him in that house. Guess how long the ark stays in Obed-Edom's house? Three months. How long does Mary stay with Elizabeth? Three months. Now, what is Luke saying? What is Luke saying? Luke is saying, in the old covenant, we get this beautiful box that holds the law of God written on stone. But in the new covenant, we get human beings that are the Ark of the Covenant and that hold not the word of God in tablet, but the word of God on the heart. And the presence of God dwells within us. Now we've got to ask, how are we going to walk? How are we going to carry that presence? Because when we walk into a room, we should be bringing that presence with us. We should be making space for that presence in our life. When one of my, I remember my, the first time I saw my son born. There he was. The doctor said, here you go, buddy. <laughs> my response was twofold. First, oh, Second, oh, I don't know. I don't know if you want me to hold that baby because I, I might drop that baby. I don't know what to do with that. He's, he's, he's coming closer. I can see it. it was in slow motion. I still see it to this day. Do you want to hold your baby? And there I am. And I'm, I'm saying, uh, now I love my baby. I want to, but I'm also, I don't trust myself. Right? You can't, you gotta be, you gotta be tender with a baby. You got to be aware and gentle with that baby. Friends, it is the same with the presence of God. You've got to be aware. You've got to be tender. You've got to be intentional with the presence of God in your life. You can't just be throwing that baby around. (laughs) 
You've got to hold the presence. You've got to pray, you've got to walk, you've got to obey, you've got to read the word, you've got to be with the Lord to make more room for that presence in your life so that he can come out and shine more through our cracks. Because we are clay jars and we hold this treasure in this broken vessel. But man, that light loves to shine. We announce through the presence of God, your walk with Christ brings with it an announcement wherever you go. I, I know you've met those people when they show up in a room or in a place and they, it just, there's something different. They change the atmosphere of the room. So here's what happens next. So we got that, we announce from presence, we can be attentive to the, prever- the, to the presence of God with reverence and awe. Abiding in Christ. But next, we also have to learn to announce from blessing. And here's what I mean. Let's let's go back to the text here. It says that Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting. I love this. And the baby left in her womb. John, right? John is in her womb. There's John in the womb. And John is going, whoa! John is leaping in the room. He's like, mom, 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 mom. And she's like, I got it, I got it, I got it. And suddenly she is filled with the Holy Spirit. Now look at what she says. She says, blessed are you among women. Now here's the deal. She didn't know Mary was pregnant. This is a word of knowledge coming to her from the Holy Spirit. The the Greek here, krauge, means to cry out spontaneously. It's very unusual. It means to declare spontaneously. She doesn't know what she's doing. The baby is leaping and she's like, oh, blessed are you. What's coming out of my mouth? Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And then listen to this. And how has it happened to me that the mother of my Lord, she knows something else. Not only is Mary pregnant, but she is pregnant with a word that is only reserved for God. Curios. That my Lord would come to me. How can she know that that baby is the Lord within her? What Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 12, 3, no one can call Jesus Christ Lord except by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is in her and she is blessing Mary. Now, how does she bless her? She just tells the truth. This is how we bless each other. And we need to do this. And I'm I'm not kidding. This is not a nice thought or a nice Hallmark card. We need to say to one another, you are blessed because you've been saved by Jesus Christ. You are blessed because you are made by God, because God loves you. He lived for you. He died for you. He was raised for you. You are blessed. This, here's the truth. It doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done. Our God loves you. This is the truth. You are loved and adored and treasured by God, the creator of the entire universe. This God looked down upon you and said, I want you, Zach Kirby. (laughs) All y'all. This is the truth. And we need to bless one another with this truth, as weird as it may feel sometimes, as vulnerable as it may feel sometimes. Look, the world is not vulnerable. Jesus Christ is. We follow him, not the world. We are willing to open the gates of our hearts so that the king of glory may come in. We are, we are the ones who risk being hurt in order to proclaim the love of God. We need to bless one another. Here's, here's what, I, I love this. Blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what had been spoken to her by the Lord. You believed, Mary, and you are blessed because of it. Brothers and sisters, you have believed through the storms, through the loss, through the pain, through the hardship, you believed in something that has not yet come, but you believe it will come and you are blessed because of it. And you will be blessed because of it. As you struggle together, as you pray together, as you cry together, as you rejoice together, we are blessing each other. And we are announcing the coming of Christ when we do it.
Look, let's, let's get to the place where we are sitting with someone and they say, man, I'm going through something really hard. Let's not say, hey, I will pray for you. Let's say, can I pray for you now? How can I pray for you now? Let's pray right here. Let me bless you. And by doing so, I'm announcing that Christ is alive in your life and in mine and that he is coming. Shoot, maybe he's coming right now through you and through me. Finally, we get this, what I want to call the announcement of sacrifice and praise. Look, when Elizabeth does all this, the Holy Spirit is with Mary too. And we hear Mary said, my soul exalts the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has had regard for the humble state of his bond slave. For behold, from this time on, all generations will count me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name. Look at what Mary is saying. She suddenly breaks out into song. Do you all do this? (laughs) Look, what happens is she begins to break out in this song of praise to proclaim who God is and how good he is. Before, she said yes to the angel in the angel's presence, right? She said, I am the servant. But that was just with the angel. Does she have the courage to exalt and magnify the Lord in front of another human being? Does she have the courage to recognize that actually it's not her that's done anything, it's that she is weak? She says it, I am humble, I am low, I am needy. All who are weak, all who are thirsty, come to the fountain. If you think you're full, you're not going to eat. It's only the hungry. It's only the thirsty. And Mary acknowledges, I am hungry and I am thirsty. And yet she praises God. Look, I can tell you, the thing I struggle with most in my faith is probably I sit passively and I wait to feel something before I praise God. I wait and say, well, Until I feel the joy. Okay, Lord, thank you. I feel joyful now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But honestly, what the Lord is saying is don't wait to feel joyful. Walk in the joy right now. Walk in it with the tears. Walk in it with the pain. Proclaim my name in the midst of that. That is praise. That is a sacrifice of praise. It's easy to praise when we're happy. But to come to know and praise God, look, when the storm is raging all around, but Jesus is in the boat. I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying that's what faith is. That though the circumstances say one thing, my Jesus says another. That though the world says one thing, my Jesus says there is a way through. This is how we do it. Think for a moment about Jesus. Think, what did he do for you and for me? He had the best setup you're ever going to have. The right hand of the Father, invincible, immortal, perfect, innocent. Voluntarily, he gave up his dad. Voluntarily, he gave up his home. Voluntarily, he gave up invincibility to become Vincible, if that's a word. (laughs) He did it voluntarily. Think about how often you and I want to give up our comfort. Think about how often you and I want to give up anything. Now think about what he gave up for you and for me. He gave up his life.
Meditate on that. You can't help but praise him. You can't help but thank him. That he would do that for me? That he didn't sit up there and say, well, I don't know, Father, I'm looking down there and they don't deserve it. He didn't say that. How many times have we said that? I'm not going to give that person that gift. They don't deserve it. I'm not going to help them out. They're not, what are they going to do with it? They're probably going to trash it. Jesus said, I don't care. I will go among them and I will let them kill me. I will give up everything for them so that they will know how much I love them. It says here at the very end, he spoke to our fathers and to Abraham and his descendants forever and he remembered his mercy. He remembered his mercy. Our God never forgets. And he's calling you to remember today. How can you announce him? With his presence, with his blessing, and with praise and sacrifice. How can your good works, how can your service announce with praise and blessing and presence as you go out into the world? 